Hello everyone and welcome to this tutorial. In this video I will show you how to use the Just Through EasyMath software. Let's start by examining the features of the software interface. The graphical interface of EasyMath has the CAD drawing as its main element. On the left side we have a section dedicated to general data where we can enter project information such as description, customer, site, location and so on. To view the satellite map of the area of interest we can enter the latitude and longitude coordinates. Once entered the map will be displayed in the central panel. To capture the satellite image of the study area click on capture view and the image will be automatically saved in the report that we will export later. Additionally, we can attach a photo to the report by clicking on Select Photo. For example, we could attach a photo of the side of interest. This image will also be included in the final report. Next, let's move to the section called the Tracks, which represents the input data where we will insert the seismic traces. To add a trace, click on the insertion button next to Add Tracks and then select the SG2 file. The seismic traces will be displayed in the main CAD. We can filter the traces by clicking on Crop Seismogram and selecting only the part of the signal that interests us, eliminating any other anomalies recorded in the signal. Next, select the desired area Right click and observe the filtered portion of the signal. Now let's move on the spectral analysis section. The first thing to consider is the experimental phase velocity curve. This curve is generated by the software based on the input data, traces or tracks. When we click on the run analysis button, the software will provide us with an image representing the phase velocity spectrum next to it. In the analysis settings window on the left, we can see the values of minimum frequency, maximum frequency, minimum velocity and maximum velocity. We can modify these values and the side grid will adjust accordingly. What we see in the grid is the dis distribution of the traces in the frequency velocity phase. To identify the numerical dispersion curve, we identify the modes, which are the points corresponding to frequencies and phase velocities that we determine ourselves, and these points will outline our numerical phase velocity curve. In the picking section from the drop down menu next to mode, we can select mode 0, 1, etc. Mode 0 represents the fundamental mode. Click on add points and trace an initial hypothetical dispersion curve. When we hover the mouse over the trace of the points, a pop up appears with the frequency value, velocity, wavelength, and depth. If we have a mistakenly traced a point, we can simply click on the late point. If we want to redo the trace, we can click on new selection. Next, we can identify the subsequent modes, for example, mode number one, click on add point and trace additional points, and so on for the following modes. To allow the software to work correctly and identify the experimental curve, reliable data must be provided. For example, we can enter stratigraphic data obtained from a survey, such as the number of layers and thicknesses of different lithologies, in the synthetic model table, along with the unit volume natural weight and saturated unit volume weight values obtained from geotechnical laboratory data. Once the stratigraphic data are entered, we also include the velocity values we read from the phase velocity spectrum, and we will see the experimental curve appear. To minimize the error between the numerical curve and the experimental one, 
we can move on the moods and reposition the points we have identified using the move points function. At this point, we proceed by clicking on inversion and stratigraphic profile. During this phase, we will make the algorithm work by entering the number of layers and the number of iteration. The higher the number of iteration, the longer it will take for the software to find the solution. For the number of modes, we insert number 3, as those are the ones we identified earlier. The obtained error percentage is low, which means that the result is acceptable, and our numerical dissipation curve is consistent with the experimental curve. In this phase, we will move to the inversion to identify the velocity profile, which will appear in the CAD. By clicking on Seismostratigraphy, we will have access to the Seismostratigraphic profile. In addition to the velocity profile, we will also see the stratigraphy with the thickness of various layers and their respective velocities. In this section of the CAD, you can adjust the scale, add hatch patterns for different layers and export the drawing in the XF format. Next, we move to the soil category section, if we want to determine the velocity calculation according to current legislation. Finally, we save our data and create the final report. Thank you for following this tutorial, and if you need further information, please check the links in the description. See you soon!